Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about what I wish I knew when I first started trading. I made a ton of mistakes early on and I could have it really accelerated my learning curve if I just focused on the five things in this video. So make sure you watch this video all the way to the end and smash that like button if you appreciate what I'm sharing today. The first thing I wish I knew is to just focus on price action, focus on candles, market structure, and volume. And what I mean by that is to ignore the indicators, ignore the RSI, ignore the divergences, look at the actual structure of the candles, as you can see right here. Uh, candle structure, I'm talking about, you know, bullish engulfing candles, bearish engulfing candles, as in this is a bullish engulfing, you know, a rejection candle, this red candle right here, it has a long wick at the top, small body. Uh, the doji candles where it's like an indecision candle you know these reversal candles where it pushed down but then it you know got bought back up has a long wick at the bottom understanding the candle structure would be the biggest priority and not wasting time on looking at indicators seeing the way the candles form and then learning market structure higher highs and higher lows and there's lower highs lower lows what i mean by that is we go up that is a high then we would come down and we would make a higher low, and then we, we would trade back up again, making a higher high. That is a bullish market structure. And then bearish market structure, if we go down, then we have a retracement, we come back up and make a lower high, and then we go down again, and we make a lower low. So this would be bearish market structure, this would be bullish market structure. And understanding that with the candle structure, those two alone will get anyone way farther than any indicator will, and you won't waste any time whatsoever there. Uh, the third thing would be volume. And just an example on the, the chart here, uh, if we're just looking, we're on the four hour chart of NQ, uh, this is a high, then we made a low, then we made a lower high and a lower low. That's bearish market structure, came up another lower high because we couldn't get above this high, came down, you know, chopped around, but then boom, went even lower. So this is another lower low down here. That means that you know we're trending to the downside. But on higher time frames, we are bullish. So understanding market structure, understanding the way the candles are forming, massive, massive thing to understand. The third thing would be volume. So if you come down, let's say we look at the three minute and we look at today, uh, if you're trading intraday, volume can make a big difference. If you're swing trading, then volume doesn't matter. Volume doesn't matter if you're swing trading, but if you're you know intraday, I believe personally that volume can help a lot. So just an example of using volume, I like to use volume in the sense where uh, I used the opposite colors. So we pushed up, we came down, and then we had this candle close right here. So this was the first, in my opinion, the first high volume candle after a higher low. So we made a lower low, pushed up, made a higher high, sold off, made a higher low, and then we had a high volume because it's higher than the, the sell volume. High green volume candle, more volume than the sell volume candle. Uh, bullish engulfing candle close. So I'm basically pairing all the things I just explained in the first tip here, where I'm using market structure to say, okay, we're bullish, we made a higher high, now this is a higher low, and we have a bullish engulfing candle, so I'm using the candle analogy, which means we have a strong push, and this is also high volume, and it's a higher low. So on this candle close, you could enter in a long, go for a one-to-one, -one, right? Maybe you're going for like uh, 15, or like a you know, 15 point stop loss and you're going for like a 15 point target, right? Boom, doesn't work out, you get stopped out. I'm just showing a quick example, uh, but that is the third step. You use volume, you use price, and you use market structure. Now the second thing I wish I knew was to stick to a specific trading time window. And that means that I'm only allowed to take trades within this window. For me personally, it's 9.30 a.m. Eastern to 12 p.m. stopping at lunchtime because I've learned and I've seen my strategies do not work especially if I take entries from 12 to one, definitely does not work. Um, you know, the odd time, obviously like a 1.30 uh, trade will work. Um, but I have noticed, you know, I, I will, I'm allowed to take trades 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern and 9.30 to 12. I'm not taking the trade any, any trade entries after 3 p.m. because I've noticed, well, first of all, volume dries up, right? The best opportunities we all know is around the market open. Um, and you won't be able to really fine tune those details until you do start trading and you are trading a while and you're, you're saying like, oh wow, maybe I shouldn't take a trade in the first 15 minutes of the open because it's too volatile and you, you can't really get a clear direction or read because you could see how we're, how we're moving pre-market, but then once the market opens, things could change. So find and, and choose a trading window, a uh, time of day that you're allowed to take entries in and, and stick to that trading entry period only. Don't take trades outside of that trading window. The third thing that it's 
I think is most important, even above all of all, of all those things, is every single trade must have a stop loss and a take profit. Before you go in the trade, you have to know your stop loss, you have to know your take profit, and you have to stick to those. Put them on. I personally have an ATM. An ATM is where as soon as I enter the trade, it automatically puts the stop loss and the take profit on the screen, and I can drag it to where it needs to be. So make I always make sure it's set on entry. I can't tell you, you know, I traded two years, actually. I traded two years without a stop loss. Two years without a stop loss. Take that in, right? So I was profitable, you know, after one year, but then I would have one loss that would wipe out a few months of profits because I didn't have a stop loss. And, you know, I thought it would, it would come back and never came back until it, the loss was so big that it would, it's, you know, it's going to blow my account soon and I have to give up mentally and close the trade, right? But if you always have a stop loss on, then, you know, at least you have death by a thousand paper cuts and you're learning way more than just having one huge loss that completely wipes out everything. So that's going to really accelerate how fast you become a consistently profitable trader. The fourth step now is to create a set of rules and read them out loud every single morning. I have Evernote. I use Evernote and I write down all of my trading rules. I have about like 12 of them and I read them out loud every single morning. And one of them is, you know, I'm only allowed to take trades during this time. You know, my stop loss is this amount. Uh, I'm not allowed to take a trade with a stop loss greater than 20 points on NQ, right? Things like this. And I read them out loud so that way I'm training myself to follow them. That's why I read them out loud as well. So, you know, go along, right? right you know, make sure you put those rules in. Another great rule is to stop after two losses. If you take two losses back to back, done for the day, shut it down. Doesn't matter what time it is, just shut it down, right? Simple rules like that because that rule is to prevent tilt. If you take two losses back to back, you might size up on the third one to try to make back the first two losses. And that, that's, I've done that obviously plenty of times. I plenty of times I've done that, right? So I know myself, I know I, I do get, I do start to get triggered if I take two losses back to back and I may size up on the third one. So because of that, I have that rule in there, so that way I just shut it down, walk away and do something else. The fifth and final tip I can give you is to always focus on risk when you're deciding on size to use for a trade. Do not focus on how much you'll make. I did this again for the first year at least. I would take always take a trade and just look at the upside. Look at, oh, I can make you know 2,000 on this trade. Oh, I can make 1,000 on this trade. I'm not, I wasn't even thinking about, I wasn't even thinking about how much I can lose, right? Because I also didn't even have a stop loss. So clearly I wasn't thinking about how much I could lose. So you always want to determine, okay, you know, if I take this trade and it doesn't work, I'm going to lose $500. Am I okay with losing the $500? And the second tip with this is always focus on risking less than you personally want to risk. Like, let's say you're like, okay, you know, I'm going to lose 500 on this. Uh, you know, you know, that's okay because you know, it's going to, it's going to be a winner anyways. So that's fine. You know, the, the loss would suck, but I'll, I'll just put it on anyways. No, no, no. Size even lower than that. Always just size even lower than you want to risk. Say you're comfortable with $400 of risk in this trade you're going to put on was 500 just make it $200 risk trade it as a long game right you're also even if you're in the first one or two years you're just getting started right like you, you want to do this for five ten years that's when you make the most amount of money it always compounds you get better and better and you, you get more and more disciplined as you go after taking all these mistakes and lessons and learning from them so start out the right way focus on the five things that i wish i knew and you're going to drastically accelerate your learning curve and you'll be well on your way to being profitable far sooner than you can imagine. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciated it. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I post one or two videos a week on helping you become a more consistently profitable trader. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.